Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are now in round four of the Swiss Pools for the mid-season showdown here at St. Clair College in the Nexus. And we also have our giant stack of plushies. And we also have me as one of your hosts, Daniil Bettersmiggy Brown with Owen Hybrid Mantha. And after coming off the heels of that intense game three, we're ready for game four. And I, based off of what Owen was just telling me a second ago, I think we're in for a bit of a treat. Yeah, we kind of are ready for a big of a treat. We have two players playing on stream right now who made the top cut yesterday. And that's Eric Luong, who was in third place, uh, and Olivia Maledski, who was in sixth yesterday. Um, so it's going to be a pretty good treat. Um, I didn't get to watch any of the games yesterday, and I heard both of these players had pretty interesting teams. So it's going to be nice to see. Uh, let's have a little touch uh, on something that you want to talk about. Mm. Let's talk about Eric. Of course, you know, Eric, bring in the Hatterene, you know, I think that Pokemon is really interesting. We were kind of talking a little bit about how Psychic might be one of mm -hmm. the forces to kind of worry about here. And uh, Hatterene kind of representing that. Uh, not going to be like a full Psychic spam team, but it's going to be running Magic Balance. It's going to have a Terrestrialization type of Fire, and it's going to be running a Life Orb. So just a general uh, Sweeper type. Has Expanding Force. I'm not sure if it has... Oh, it does have Indeedy. Okay, never mind. So we might actually be some of the, see some of the Psychic spam. So with the Indeedy running, of course, you know, the Psychic Surge, you're going to have a huge damaging Hatterene uh, running the Expanding Force, mm -hmm. doing a lot of damage plus with the trick room as well first turn you use for the uh setup on the indeedy maybe you uh pff, yeah protect or something anything on the hatterene just to keep it alive and well and then you could probably if not ko your opponent's leads you do a significant amount of damage with dazzling gleam or completely uh one shot any of the opposing pokemon yeah. with extending force something special about eric's team is that he has two trick room setters both hatterene oh. and indeedy um, so obviously Indeed is going to come oh, out there to yeah. set up the Psychic Surge, but they also have Hatterene as well on the back line in case if they want to maybe wait a little bit and set up Trick Room. Maybe if you don't want to lead with it, then you can... It, it kind of depends. Exactly. You might not want to lead it with Indeed. You, know, you never know. So we'll see. Um, it, it'll be very interesting for sure with a double Trick Link. But let's talk about Olivia's team for sure. Uh, <laughs> Olivia's bringing in Gouging Fire, King Gambit, Wellspring Ogre Pong, something that we haven't seen yet. Actually, we've seen it one oh, time. We've seen a lot of it. <laughs> My apologies. Maybe but, not I mean, a lot, I mean just but... But strictly today, I think we've only seen it on one team so far. One or two. Um, maybe two, yeah. But Chen Pao, Lando Incarnate, um, and Rillaboom. Um, so kind of a standard team uh, on this sort of side of things. Um, not anything too much that they're going to lean into, right? There's no, like, uh, it's not like a Tailwind team. It's not like a Sun team, not anything. It's a very balanced team. Going up against Eric Luong's, like, super, super, super... Uh, like size spam kind of focus team. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see for sure. Another thing we didn't mention is that Sneasler also has Psychic Seed as well. Oh, yes, yes. On yes. Eric's team. The uh, Sneasler we did see in the first event that we kind of casted did also Ooh. have the uh, Psychic Seed, I believe. So I don't think it did. It, I, think I think it went for the Choice Scarf. I think it had the Seed because I remember that's when I learned what Psychic Seed did. I, I, I'm pretty sure Sneasler did not have Psychic Seed because we didn't see Sneasler on a team that utilized Psychic Seed. And Grassy Seed. Maybe grassy, yeah, grassy seed. seed. Maybe grassy seed for sure. But it'll be interesting to see what Sneasler does on this sort of team. Obviously, it's going to come out and they consume the psychic seed. Mm -hmm. uh, but it'll be nice to see like what kind of role. If it's obviously Sneasler is a super, super strong Pokemon. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of what their uh, what Eric's game plan is for sure. Absolutely. And uh, speaking more on Olivia's team, with that Gouging Fire, it's actually the first one we're seeing today. Mm. Uh, it was kind of a force to be reckoned with again in the first event that we casted together here. It was basically on everyone's team, but now we're only seeing it for the first time. Do you think anything's kind of changed in the landscape that's made it less favorable, or is this just kind of a coincidence thing? I don't think so. I think there's a lot of good value, like uh, high value fire types that you can bring to the field. It just kind of depends on what sort of like niche or what sort of like uh, um, style that you want your team to sort of fit in. Mm -hmm. Gouging Fire does a lot for you, right? It has like, uh, I think it has breaking swipes. Yeah, it has breaking swipes um, to sort of like help with damage control. Um, and, and it's it's super strong, right? Heat Crash is going to do a ton of damage. Has Burning Burl Walk to get that burn on, you know, suspect other Pokemon as well. Um, but like there's other good Pokemon in the format that are fire types as well. Hearth Flame, Ogre Pong, mm -hmm. super good, super strong if you want to lead into that like fire sweeper. Right. Uh, what else we have? Incineroar. Right. Um, Arcanine. We have both Arcan like the normal Arcanine, Hisuian Arcanine. So there's a ton of different like good fire types in the format right now. Um, so it's not. I don't think it's anything necessarily that Gouging Fire is doing wrong. I think it just kind of depends on what 
teams want to lean into. I think also Gathering Fire was kind of new um, when we did do that tournament like the other week. Um, so a lot of teams might want to try it out, like we did say in the like uh, like we did say previously, these mid-season showdowns, um, these like uh, show challenges, uh, whatever the tournament we did cast last time was. Um, these are kind of the tournaments that you go into test grounds. these teams before you bring it into the regionals. Um, so that's why we saw a lot of Gadget Fire last time. But it's nothing to say that Gadget Fire <laughs> is bad. Gadget Fire is still a really good Pokemon. For sure. And it has a lot of uh, things I can bring to the table. Something like a King Gambit as well that's on Olivia's team. The Assault Vest, the Kowtow Cleave, it can do so much to threaten basically every Pokemon to Eric's team as well. So there's a lot of offensive pressure on the side of Olivia's team, whereas I feel like Eric Luang has a lot more defensive capabilities than normal. But maybe I'm wrong uh, with the Incineroar and the Ogre Pond, Teal Mask. Teal Mask is just the pure grass type, am I right? Teal Mask is the pure yeah. grass type. Yeah, every other Ogre Pond does hold like their masks as like their held items. Mm -hmm. Teal Mask Ogre Pond is the only one that actually gets to hold, uh, you know, specific items. And we'll see the lead coming in here. Obviously, you see the Ndidi female coming in with a sneeze alert on the side of Eric Luang. And Olivia is going to lead that uh, pretty kind of standard balance lead, as you see with the Gouging Fire and Wellspring Ogre Pond. Um, pretty good, pretty also defensive lead as well. So this is going to get that special defense boost from that Psychic Seed. Um, and Gouging Fire is going to get that Protosynthesis boost right now, and it's going to be its speed. Um, very interesting to see what's going to happen right here. Well, yeah, with the Burning Bulwark coming out onto the Gouging Fire, just to stop any of the offensive pressure that the season might be putting on, uh, it could be facing a burn as well if the uh, Burning Bulwark does decide to hit it. Indeedy, did his job, get me out of here. Maybe we're gonna see the Ogre, okay, yeah, it's gonna be the Ogre Pond coming out now, just to deal with some of that pressure on the side of uh, Olivia's team. With the uh, Burning Bulwark, it's gonna go for the Burning Bulwark now. Uh, the Spiky Shield as well, just full protect turn for Olivia. Yeah. Uh, protect it from anything that the uh, full that protect. Eric might be trying to do. Dire and Claw is gonna hit as well. Yeah, and why this is such a good lead too, especially for the Sneezer, right? Sneezer makes contact on every move. So either it takes a burn from Burning Burlwalk, or it takes some like you know some chip damage from the Spiky Shield. Right. So it's just kind of up to what Eric decided was gonna be the better bet. You're probably gonna go into the Ogre Pong anyways, just because you know Dire Claw is gonna be super effective towards Ogre Pong mm -hmm. regardless, and you really don't want to get that burn on Sneezer. You really don't want Sneezer to be burned. Right. And I want to think that one thing that's kind of scary about making a turn like that would be that the uh, Sneezer could have the sword stance, but this one doesn't, so you're not even risking a setup turn from the Sneezler. So a full protect turn is going to be always favorable. But we're going to see the Terrestrialization coming out on this side of Eric Luong. It's going to go on to the Ogre Pond, and now we're going to see some real, real, real pressure coming out with that beautiful mask being unleashed. The Ivy, look at it, it's a beautiful one. This is the first time I've seen it in play, because uh, everyone, again, usually running the Wellspring Ogre Pond. Yeah. The full Terra on the uh, ground. Last time Ogrepon is a, it's quite the sight to behold, but Ogrepon on the side of Olivia's team is going to redirect. It's going to dire claw. It's going to connect onto the Ogrepon and Ivy Cudgel as well. Going to take down Olivia's own Ogrepon, but with the Burning Bulwark, rather, or sorry, the Gouging Fire right next to it, it's still something you have to consider uh, as a threat. It's going to Heat Crash into the Sneasler. Not going to quite take it out. Definitely a pretty scary turn for you. You know, you're losing a pretty significant Pokemon for your side in the Ogre Pond, but now you're coming out with the Grassy Surge, which uh, will be boosted Grass-type moves, so the Ogre Pond should still be quite a threat, uh, even more yeah. so now. Yeah, think of this now. Ogre Pond gets a speed boost from the Terrestrialization, right? Also gets an attack boost to all of its grass moves, which is just Ivy Cudgel because it also does have Stomping Tantrum. And this is the second team that has Stomping Tantrum on the Ogre Pond too. Something that I thought was like pretty niche, but I guess it's sort of common, I guess now. Uh, maybe for like the uh, like the niche Ogre Pong picks, like we said, the Teal Mask and whatnot. Um, so we'll kind of see what happens here. But um, like this, even though Grassy Surge, sure, is a good setup and obviously helps everybody out, obviously with like, you know, the HP mm -hmm. um, re restoration. But Ogre Pong is going to get a huge boost. He's going to still want to go out though, regardless. Can't really do too, too much against Gouging Fire besides the Stomping Tantrum, but like can't do much anyways against really good at regardless. Um, so Incineroar does come out, gets that Intimidate. Sneeze are going to go for the Protect, probably a good move anyways. Um, we'll kind of see what happens here. The Breaking Sweat comes through, and it's going to get the drop on to the Incineroar. 
yeah, usually the Incinera comes in and it's the one that's doing the attack reductions, which it did, to be fair, but it's gonna get a taste of that itself here. U-turn coming up from the Rillaboom. It does not want to be out here facing down the Incineroar. You know, fire and grass don't mix well in favor of the grass type, but now with Chen Pao coming out, it's still a pretty scary bet because the Chen Pao is an ice type, though does have the stellar terrestrialization type if you wanted to go for that. It is a fresh turn, so it is possible we could see it coming out, but it's just going to protect to get more information. Protect is such a huge part of VGC, but I feel like today we honestly haven't seen it too much, uh, so we could even be uh, maybe... Yeah, this is the first battle. I'm seeing a lot of protect coming out, it's gathering a lot of information, and I'm excited to see how Olivia makes use of it. Yeah, Olivia's going to go for the double protect again, just like what they did last turn as well. Uh, or sorry, the first turn is what I meant to say. Um, going for the double protect, and it's a good move as well. You do want to scout out kind of what Eric is going to do. The fake out, obviously, you do know. Like, fake out pressure in this game is huge, right? With Rillaboom and Incineroar being 2-2-2 two, two, two top yeah. Pokemon, right? Fake out pressure is, is massive. You also don't want like the close combat to come through from Sneasler. You don't want the Dire Claw to come through to like get that you know that poison off or what whatnot that paralysis off. Uh, so it's 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 a good bet. It's a good bet for sure. Um, Eric is also a top player. Eric is really good. So you do want to kind of feel out, sort of gauge what Eric is planning on doing. So the double protect is not a bad option. Not at all. How is going to be the play next here? I think that I think that is a is a pretty scary kind of play to go for. If it works out in your favor, it's huge, but you're facing down an Incineroar. One of your strongest attackers on your side is an Ice type, but going here, Icicle Crash. Owen, uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Just go for this. I, I, the switch comes through, so maybe this is honestly like a sick read, and it is a sick read because he, indeed he comes out. Um, and, and this is, this is phenomenal. Uh, the Sucker Punch does, like, she clicks Sucker Punch, which is not gonna, like, do anything, mm. um, for obvious reasons, right? Indeed, he doesn't attack anybody right now, so the Sucker Punch won't do anything. But even still, um, I, I was kind of freaking out a little bit. I was like, I was yeah, like, you please, were. click the Secret Sword! Please do it! Don't do it! Um, but yeah, how is gonna come through, boost both Gouging Fire and Chen Pao's attack, um, and that's going to bring them back to, like, even, right? Because they were intimidated before. So it's going to bring them back down to, like, a level playing field. Yeah, and now you're at a level playing field. Everything's nice and calm. Your Chen Pao with 1 HP, you might just try to get off maybe, like, a Sucker Punch onto the Ndidi. But the Ndidi, in all likelihood, is just going to go for support moves like Follow Me. It might even try setting up Trick Room here. I'm not sure what your thoughts on that could look like. But if you say, yeah, setting, I don't think this is Trick Room is to play here. Uh, you're facing down a... Uh, yeah. a gouging fire you don't want to get, make that even a stronger pick not at all yeah trick room is probably not going to be the play regardless most of your pokemon are very fast sneezler is very fast um teal mask ogre pong is very fast it has a speed boost and it like did come back out so it's not going to get that speed boost when it comes back in mm -hmm. it's only a one-time speed boost it doesn't come back every time you switch in the field uh but it's still fast enough where it doesn't benefit anything at all from uh, from Trick Room. So yeah, Trick Room is not going to be in play, hopefully, at least. Trick Room, yeah, not going to be seen here, but the Breaking Swipe knocking out both remaining Pokemon on Eric's side of the field. Uh, so now, you got two left, one of them being an Incineroar, one of them being a, a an Ogre Pond Grass type. I believe it's still full HP. Can't quite remember that much there, but you have three Pokemon left on the side of Olivia. You still have a lot of work. You can get done with it. The Incineroar Intimidate gonna come off again, which is always gonna feel bad. But you do have that Howl. I'm really impressed with how Olivia managed to get that. Oh, I'm wrong, actually. Place. Embody Aspect activates every time you enter the field. I I, I didn't know that. I, that's my apologies. But yeah, the speed boost comes back out for Okapong too. So Okapong's gonna be pretty fast. I don't think it's faster than Chen Pao. Probably not, but uh, I'm just going to go back to what I was talking about with the Howl. I feel like that was a very well-played circumstance to get the Howl off. Moves like that you don't really get to use often, uh, especially again, in VGC. By the time you Howl, the opponent or the Pokemon that was next to you is probably knocked out already. Uh, so impressed to see that it came off this first place. But I, what I'm mentioning this now for is, can you get that again? I feel like that might be a very strong key to victory if you can get your second Howl off and make it just a little bit easier for you. Now you have the Rillaboom, Grassy Surge coming out once again. Grass-type moves are going to be boosted even more. Facing down an Incineroar, 
It's still very uncomfortable for you if you're on Olivia's side, but the sword stance on the Ochre Pond is going to be coming out, and now things are looking very dire. And I don't mean the claw. Flare Blitz coming out, going to knock out the Qian Pao, and now you're just left with two Pokemon <laughs> remaining on Olivia's side of the board. With Gouging Fire in the reserve, it should be coming back out. I guess maybe you just want to get rid of the Intimidate effect on your Gouging Fire, and you want to bring it back. Now, oh, it does have Breaking Swipe. Does have Breaking Swipe so, for sure. Can we just touch on the fact that you just said uh, it, it, things are getting dire, and I don't mean the claw. Well, yeah, I mean that's some wordplay. Come I on. am the wordplay king. That's why I'm here. All right. <laughs> so I did it. Did it just go for Howl? I think it just went for Howl. I, I missed it, but I, it, it's fine. We'll see it in a couple seconds, anyways. Mm -hmm. um, Spiky Shield going to come up from Oak Pong. Ah, this is a good bet. This is a good bet mm -hmm. for sure. Rillaboom just came back into the field right now, so it's going to go for the fake out. It went for Howl. 100%. And if you're, faking out out. The, if you're faking that out, you're calling the, you're calling out the spiky shield on the Ogre Pond. You're, yeah, you're seeing the Howl come out. And now things are very good for a liver, or at least looking better. One thing I'm kind of factoring in is the Ogre Pond, while it's a huge threat and it's really dangerous, it is a grass type. So it's not going to be hitting the Rillaboom effectively. It's not going to be hitting the Gouging Fire effectively. But if I take a look at its moves here, Ivy Cudgel, Stomping Tantrum. The only move that really works out here would be Stomping Tantrum um, against the Gouging Fire. But even then, it does have a Terrestrialization type. I don't think uh, Olivia Terra'd yet. So that's always in the reserve tank. Olivia is going to Terra right here. As you see, they're going to commit the, ter the Fire Terra onto the Rillaboom. That makes sense. It does make sense, right? Obviously, both Pokemon, the only attacking move that any Incineroar runs is going to be Flare Blitz. Immediately resist that. Uh, I think Eric Luong still can go for Stomping Tantrum. I don't know if uh, Olivia knows that for sure, but at least it's going to give... Actually, I don't know if that was... You're trading one weakness for another. You're trading yeah. the Incineroar Flare Blitz weakness for the Ogre Pong... Um, uh, what's it called? Stomping Tantrum weakness. We're seeing it come out now. Onto the Gouging Fire. Gonna take it down to just uh, like a quarter HP remaining, but the Heat Crash coming out in retaliation. Gonna Ooh. knock out the Ogre Pond. The Incineroar, the last Pokemon for Eric, and it's looking bleak now. You have a Gouging Fire. It's two Fire types facing down an Incineroar. Knockoff is gonna get the knock KO onto the Gouging Fire. It is a 1v1 here, classic style down mid. And Incineroar. Classic looking, style down mid. It is, yeah. You're casting too much Valorant now. <laughs> no, I'm talking about Dota stuff, all right? 1v1 me mid, buddy. Woodhammer coming out onto the Incineroar. Oh, oh that's a lot more damage than I was expecting. And knock off. You got to think, man. He got, he's got the plate. The plate's going to be, yeah. oh, the metal plate's going to be gone, but he had the plate plus gra uh, grassy, or, uh, grassy terrain. Yeah, I, I'm tripping today. I'm losing a lot of it. But yeah, grassy terrain, obviously the boost. The Woodhammer is going to pick, pick up the knockout right now and... Olivia takes game one. Olivia takes game one. That was really well played by both trainers. And, I, and down to the wire, too. Yeah. I, I really like how that went through. I feel like we really got to see the depths of analytical Pokemon strategy here from our trainers. Uh, we... All we got to do is really like see what they did and kind of interpret how it was most likely they were thinking about it. But what I again, what I really love is their thoughts might be completely different from ours, mm -hmm. and we can speculate, which is very fun. And we can predict, which is also very fun. Well, same thing, but we can also analyze, also very fun. But at the end of the day, everybody plays differently, everybody thinks differently, and you can express that through your play style. There's so many different ways to play the game, and we got to see mm -hmm. just two very strong ones right now. Yeah, like you said, there's a lot of ways to play this game for sure. Eric Long has such a diverse team. We didn't see the Hatterene come out. We didn't mm -hmm. see the Urshifu Rapid Strikes come out, right? So there are still options for Eric to sort of fall back on if Eric wants to, to change up his game plan. Um, Olivia came out and, like, honestly, thought Olivia at one point was at the back foot. Same. Like, at, at a certain I point, I, I thought it was kind of <laughs> over. I thought Eric Literally. was going to clean up. But Olivia played that last couple, those last, like, three, four rounds amazingly. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, like you said, went down to the wire. It, went, it was just one move that really, like, called the game. Um, but even still, that was, that was still amazing. But like you said, um, we still have other options to fall back. Eric didn't bring the Hatterene and the Urshifu. So exactly. there, there's, there's, there's still things to bring out. Uh, we didn't see the King Gambit from Olivia. We didn't see the Lando Incarnate. 
uh, there, there's still options like to you know for both sides to sort of come out to. Um, if you're Eric, you're realizing, okay, maybe Incineroar did maybe a little bit too much. Now that we know that Brillaboom is a Terra Fire, maybe Urshifu is a good option to have mm -hmm. on the back line in case if we do Terrasalize on the fire for Rillaboom um, for the side of Olivia, okay, maybe we can bring Lando I. It, it's maybe a little confusing. We'll have to wait and see. Okay. It, it, it just it kind of depends. Yeah. And also, now that we know that both sides have uh, Intimidate Pokemon, bring out the King Gamut. We get the Defiant boost. Why sure. not? That's the thing, though. I, I don't know if you want to give up Intimidate on the side of Eric's squad. Uh, with mm -hmm. your Incineroar being the only thing that brings it. <sighs> it, 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 it I, see, I see the theory there. And you were just... Oh, no one's saying to get rid of Incineroar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No I, just, I just don't even... I, yeah. It's just, there's so many different things you can do. Yeah. And I love that. But there's so many things you can't. <laughs> right. Getting rid of your Incineroar is such a scary thing to even consider. It's not going to be considered. He's going to be bringing the Incineroar into this one. It's going to be the bipedal mammals uh, coming into this next one versus the uh, the quadrupedal ones on the other side of the field. Uh, we're going to start things off with Olivia bringing the Chen Pao and the Gouging Fire. Incineroar and Urshifu rapid strikes on the side of Eric Luong. And this is a very explosive explosive first battlefield a lot of hp damage can be taken immediately and a lot of it can be mitigated as well a lot of protection strategies that can be uh, followed up with but we're going to see the swap out with the gouging fire we're going to be bringing out the ogre pond and i believe also swapping out the Chien pao so we could be complete switch out exactly yeah we're seeing a complete switch out uh for olivia the not liking her odds in the start here and it's going to be eric long with the retaliation Grassy Surge is up, but I want to see how Eric Pong, how Eric is going to be able to respond to this one. The Surging Strikes coming out onto Ogre Pond. Read that. Uh, going to basically waste the turn of the Urshifu, but the U-turn read correct. Going to go out, bring out now a new Pokemon for Eric. He's going to have the benefit of seeing Olivia's field and bringing someone out that works very well in this one. And I couldn't think of a better Mon here than the Sneasler. Very favorable against both of these Pokemon. I don't know if the double swap was the play. Mm. You're bringing out, like, if Incineroar didn't, um, like, go, like, switch out, right? If Incineroar didn't swap, you're bringing in Rillaboom, who is super weak to both Pokemon on the field. Yes, Rillaboom can Grassy Glide and hit Urshifu first, but if not, right, still weak to Urshifu's fighting moves, still weak to um, Incineroar's fire moves, right? So it, it was a very tough call, especially if they doubled down into both of them, for sure. Obviously, it didn't happen, so, like, you know, um, uh, Rillaboom is still able to live till the next day, but it, it, it was a tough call, for sure. A tough call, and Eric is going to make a tough call himself. He's going to be swapping out the Urshifu to bring out the Ndidi, get rid of that grassy terrain to make Rillaboom's, uh, you know, attacks just slightly less strong as they otherwise would be with that grassy terrain. Going to be boosting the special defense of your Sneasler as well. Rillaboom going to be brought back. A lot of switching. This is like singles level switching we're seeing in this battle. Bringing back out the Gouging Fire, ready for anything here. It's so huge. What a huge Pokemon. And we're going to see the Terrasalization coming out now. It's going to be going on to the Ogre Pond, and we're going to see the Wellspring Mask coming into full force in this battle. Yeah, that Wellspring Ogre Pond is going to come through and get that special defense boost that the Sneezer also got to before. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see. Um, as we do have the Dire Claw coming through onto the Gouging Fire. It's oh, going to par a paralysis. Paralysis. Pa paralyze, sorry, <laughs> Gouging Fire. Uh, right there, the Ivy Cudgel is going to come through. Probably going to end up hitting, yeah, like the Ndidi right there. Oh, not the Ndidi, sorry, the Sneasler. Sneasler is going to live, though, on one HP. Damn. <laughs> one a... HP. This is the second time we've seen a one HP live second without time. a Focus Sash. Second time. That first one, though, was really scary. Because, <laughs> uh, what was it, an Amoongus? No, nah, it wasn't in Mugus. Mugus lived on like 12 mm. HP or something like that. I, I I can't remember for sure. It was something that should have died but didn't, and then it ended up knocking out a very important Pokemon retaliation. In any case, uh, with both of our uh, minds being plagued down by the cold, we're not going to have the strong memory that we otherwise would. My memory is always bad. It's fine. But in any case, heading into this next round, 10 seconds left, we're going to see which both competitors are going to be opting for here. Indeedy on the field with that terrain. Do you want to just 
bring your Rillaboom back and get it even solidified more to get your grasp, but we're gonna see its rationalization coming out onto the Sneasler. I mean, it is, what, full HP still, right? You kind of want to keep it out, allow it to do even more, make it a flying yeah. type. Uh, and just, it does have acrobatics as well, you've got to yeah. think, on, on, uh, for Sneasler, right? So it's gonna get that stab boost now from being a, tr uh, from being a flying type. And having no, like, it, it already consumed its, uh, exactly. its, its Psychic Seed, right? So it's going to have, like, 110 base power move, super accurate, and stab. This is super awesome for uh, for Sneezer right now. Yeah, and it's something that you don't really see coming. It, this, mm -hmm. this, in one turn, you went from just it being Sneezer to being an incredibly potent uh, flying-type threat. But it is going to go down the Burning Bulwark, I believe. Uh, did it cause that KO? I think it hit either the spiky shield or the burning bulwark and the sneeze is going to go down so that is one less threat that olivia is going to have to wor uh, worry for gouging fire burning bulwark it, f it fell to the um to the spiky shield okay it was already exactly. quite low it wasn't at full hp so it did fall to the spiky shield for sure like the double protect did go through you see olivia is super super keen on doing those double protects yeah, and it's working. Views, like, you're risking a lot usually when you do that because it allows for your opponent to read you and do a setup or a switch in. But we haven't seen that happen much here. But the Ivy Cudgel coming out to the Incineroar, a good read. Not going to knock it out quite yet, but it's still going to be in a very good position to do so. And the Howl follow up, that's as close as you're going to get to a call out, uh, you know, setup move uh, on the side of Gouging Fire. It is paralyzed as well, so it's, mm -hmm. it's like, why not go for it? Uh, because you don't want to rely on the paralysis not proccing. So if it does, and if you're not going to count on a move coming out, but you're happy if it does, right. Howl is, is exactly that move. But we're going to see the Trick Room come off, and Eric Luog is going to be sending out the Urshifu. Now, Gouging Fire might be... It is the fastest Pokemon, but it does also have a chance of just not acting. That is very true. Yeah, due to the paralysis, it's going to be the fastest Pokemon on the field. But as long as, say you know it becomes immobilized can't move right and eric long is able to take out the gouging fire mm -hmm. now eric long has the fastest pokemon on the field at all times until rillaboom comes back in and i believe will be the slowest on the field um but this is still a good good sort of play for eric to try and um sort of mitigate the damage <laughs> mitigate all the massive damage that olivia has been putting onto him the incinerar comes back out is gonna intimidate get that attack drop that howell just did give to both of them just a second ago yeah, and now Okrapon being swapped out, that howl being nullified because of the intimidation. But now with the Qian Pao coming out, the Swords of Ruin reducing their defense of all the Pokemon on the Ford, on the on the uh, field rather. Gouging fires, paralysis coming to play. Close combat gonna hit the Qian Pao, which is gonna take down to one HP thanks to the Focus Sash. So it's still here, but is it really? It's it's a trick roomed field, so it's gonna be acting last uh, it's probably gonna go for the protect here you do want to try and waste out these rooms of trick room you gotta look right you have chen pao you have gouging fire these are both two pokemon now you chen pao's at one hp and is the fastest mm -hmm. so technically it's the slowest on the field right now uh you have gouging fire who's paralyzed right and mm -hmm. won't be able to move like probably half of the time go for protect probably against urshifu probably protect I, I i don't know what you would do with gathering fire probably double protect honestly at this point i don't think urshifu sh or sorry chen pao should go for anything because circle punch won't do much is opting not to go for that protect though because it's again urshifu remember hits through protect oh i'm not even thinking about that yeah so there's no point it's gonna fall either way you might as well at least try to get something off there chen pao is ultimately gonna fall uh incinero with that heat crash gonna do so much damage but the breaking swipe just to make life a little bit more miserable for them attack reduction on the urshifu actually gonna be huge here i think uh it's either gonna force it being oh surviving on 2 hp again that's just one extra turn that you have to worry about uh you know dealing with this gouging fire it's the weirdness has disappeared from the battlefield, so that's not Trick Room. That is the that's, psychic that, terrain. That's the psychic terrain, yeah. exactly. So now Grass here, or, or sorry, um, Grass, uh, it's like, oh really gosh. I mean, you might as well call it Grassy Surge, because <laughs> that's all it is. Might as well. Um, yeah, the terrain's going to come out now from Rillaboom. Um, so the terrain, terrain just went down, now it's back up. This is the th second time this game where we've, we've had close calls on like just one like one HP, two HP sort of moves. Yeah, uh, it's it's been really close, like at all points. Um, so yeah, Rillaboom is going to come in. Earth Urshifu is going to get go rid of that attack out. Yeah, get rid of that attack drop for sure. And Didi's going <laughs> to come back in. There's noticing a pattern here. <laughs> it's just it's just switch a switch a switch. 
absolutely. They want to have full control of the terrain. And just goes to show the level of genius I have, but before we mention that, the uh, U-turn uh, going to be chunking down the Rillaboom, uh, getting the Incineroar out, bringing the Urshifu back in with all of his attack this time. <laughs> Not going to have to worry about that breaking swipe, but it is going to go for a breaking swipe yet again. Now that Urshifu is right back where it started, just with slightly less HP. Um, yeah. Well, in fact, it's better for it to go this way. Oh, it's going to go down to Rocky Helmet. Indeedy, holding a Rocky Helmet? Yes, it is. So, Gouging Fire is going to fall to that. Woodhammer is going to take down the Urshifu, however, and we're back to another scary situation here. Ogre Pond is the only other Pokemon back in the, uh, you know, sidelines for Olivia. But, you know, on Eric's side, you have an Incineroar. Intimidate's gonna be chunking down the attack even more, but it's not, oh, actually no, it will catch the Ogre Pond because they're coming out at the same time. Technically, Intimidate will proc. Um, yeah, so Ogre Pond is gonna have reduced attack, which will be a factor here because it will be trying to get as much dished out with with the IV cudgel. But I don't know, with Ndidi and Incidera, I can't really say for sure who's gonna be taking this one. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's really tough, honestly. Uh, both sides kind of have low HP Pokemon. Both sides have like, you know, the attack drop from breaking swipes. Not that it's gonna affect Ndidi that much. Um, it, it still will affect the Urshifu, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it's really tough. Everything comes down to this one turn, right? Anybody can win at this point. Incinera is gonna go for the knockoff and finish off that Rillaboom. And now it's kind of up to Wellspring Ogre Pong. Wellspring is probably going to go for that Incineroar like, pick. Probably going to go off and try and go for... Oh, the Psychic comes out for sure fast. Obviously, because it's faster, right? The damage isn't that much, though. I do think that Olivia does win this game. The Ivy, Ivy Cudgel is going to come through. Is going to be able to... No. Never mind. Ooh. I thought it was going to go for the Incineroar. I yeah. truly thought, I, and I thought that was a play. I thought you get rid of the Pokemon with the lowest amount of HP, and, and then you have a chance to like finish off and win the game. Try and stall out, go for Spiky Shield, and, and then try and wait the timeout of the Trick Room. But that's not going to be the case, right? Going to go for the Follow Me, and it's going to be able to tank another one of these hits. And, and it's pretty much kind of Eric's game. I, I, I'm not sure what... what I, I do think so. Oh, indeed he lives again. He crashes. The Another only real attacking. Wait, no, not really, because knockoff is there too. Oh. Still has knockoff. Knockoff. U turn. You're right. Heat crash. You're right. Right. This is a very attack focused like Incineroar. Can you knock off the mask though? I don't think you can technically, because okay. you do go into um, like you put on the mask afterwards. I mm. don't think you can knock off. So you're mask. not gonna get that bonus damage, but it's damage nonetheless. I've, oh, a spiky shield here though would win. Actually, no, because Psychic is still in play. I feel like Spiky Shield's the play. No? I think Spiky Shield is the play. The, I feel like Spiky psychic, Shield is the play last turn. The Psychic won't obviously be affected by the Spiky Shield and won't knock out the NDD. But if Incineroar goes for... Uh, Incineroar go for the Ivy Cudgel. I don't know if that necessarily was the play, too. You kind of want to stall it with the turns of oh. Trick Incineroar is going to fall. Now we just need to hope and pray that Psychic does not knock out Ogre Pong. Tr it went for Trick Room. Okay. I uh, think I, I think Eric kind of has this. Wait, I, I do think I don't think Ogre Pong survives think, an, another Psychic here. Does I think it does? I don't think it does. Doesn't it doesn't get a special? Like, it's, like, like Olivia's trying to stall right now because I don't think it does. Oh, with the Psychic Train. With the Psychic Train as well. Like, and sure, Ndidi is not a strong Pokemon. We saw oh. how much damage it did before, though. Exactly. With with Psychic Train coming out, I, I I don't know. The weirdness is gone, though. Oh, but it's gone. Oh, my We God. have to just wait and see. Psychic comes out. Oh, my Can God. Ogre Pong survive? No. And it can't. Ogre Pong falls. Eric ah. picks up the second game of the set. We're going to game three. We're going to game three. I, I can't help but feel like... That really could have gone Olivia's way at the end there. I feel like a spiky shield on that first turn, because mm -hmm. Incineroar, what else was Incineroar going to do? It had to attack, and then indeed he was most likely going to follow me or something else. At least you're protecting yourself. I, I feel like spiky shield at some point there would have been a much uh, more efficient play, but in any case, uh, we're going to a game three. Eric Long, obviously, both trainers playing that game very well. I really enjoy seeing how close they're taking these two. Uh, game three, we're going to see some adjustments made, I'm sure. But I, th I think if we're going to see anything coming out, it might be 
the King Gambit coming into play, I think there's just so much room for it. There's mm -hmm. so much switching. There's so much uh, intimidating, a lot of stuff coming out. I feel like getting yeah. that King Gambit out might be a factor that helps you kind of play things up. Plus, against the psychic typings, you have your dark type moves and dark typing to make things just all the easier for you. That is very true. I do think King Gambit is the play. Like we were talking about the last game, like before we went into game two. Mm -hmm. I do think King Gambit is the play. We see Incineroar, you turn out. Come back in, Intimidate. Does it have Parting Shot? I don't know. Incineroar does not have Parting Shot. It has Flare Bullets, U-Turn, Fake Out, and Knock Off. Mm -hmm. So, like, every time that Intimidate comes back out, cool. That's just another attack boost for King Gambit. Like you said, immune to all the Psychic moves that you would see from Hatterene, from, uh, from Ndidi. So, obviously, it's going to be super weak to that Sneasler. Right? If Sneasler comes okay. out, that close combat is going to be super, super strong against it. It doesn't want to go against Incineroar, right? If Incineroar does come out, cool. It does get that attack boost, but it doesn't want to be there fighting that Incineroar, right? King Gambit is not a... It's bulky enough, but it still doesn't want to take Flare Blitzes from Incineroar, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a tough call, right? It, it's kind of like a... It's a very risky play. You do bring out King Gambit. Yeah, you do get those like attack boosts, like we said. And it is, sure, immune to um, those psychic types, but it doesn't want to fight that Sneasler and Cinemar. You're absolutely right on that. And one thing I want to mention a little bit is going to be... Uh, the thing I said I'm a genius for, I remember before we were having our, our little uh, EAP off against each other, we were kind of contemplating, are we going to see people competing for terrain control? in this today yeah, at all and we did and we weren't quite sure we kind of argued back and forth about it but we absolutely are seeing it here today mm -hmm. first turn coming out eric is going to be using the fake out onto the gouging fire and uh you turn gonna come out onto the ogre pond that's Ooh. gonna be huge your ogre pond is already so low and we've seen that so many times time and time again that every point of hp matters in this battle so you're not going to be very happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Ivy Cudgel coming out, it, it's going to do something there, but I feel like that's such a huge uh, wreck to what you're working with so far. Sneasler coming out now, and we've seen, I feel like this might actually be the MVP of the game, just allowing to cause so much chaos and force you to address it in a very uncomfortable way. I feel like it's doing so much for allowing Eric to kind of get his game plan sorted out. Um, now with the uh, Urshifu back in the back lines, the Ogre Pond is going to get swapped out. And this is exactly what I was that. talking about before. Right? The King Gambit's going to come through against two Pokemon it really does not want to go against. The Incineroar is going to come out, which is good, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to take a Flare Blitz right there. And this is also beneficial too, right? Going up against the Ndidi, it, 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 is, it is good. Um, obviously, this is going to consume that, uh, that Psychic Seed. Sorry, my apologies. It's going to consume that Psychic Seed, obviously boosting that special defense, but you still don't want to go up against the uh, the Sneasler right there. Um, obviously, it does not affect, Diaclaw does not affect King Gambit, so nothing's going to happen there, but now you're kind of at a crossroads where Ndidi wants to, doesn't want to put up Trick Room, especially because it's going to benefit King Gambit, um, but Sneasler, which I, I feel like if you're Sneasler, you click close combat here and go target King Gambit instantly. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't do that. Um, I feel like that just might be straight up the play to make. If we see anything different, I'm sure there'd be a good reason for it. But like you mentioned, having King Gambit come out now is just kind of not what you're looking for. Yeah. You really want that King Gambit to... Uh, I'm just going to get out. That That's huge. King Gambit was really supposed to be the dark horse for this battle pun intended and it was supposed to allow for a lot of stuff for Olivia to get done but it kind of comes out at an awkward time and goes down at even a worse timing uh, it's going to allow at least the breaking swipe to come out from the gouging fire without much contestion but even then it's going to take a hit from the uh the rocky helmet allows trick rooms to come off you're not feeling very happy right now if you're on Olivia's side yeah, I don't want to say it was a misplay, but it was two really bad, unfortunate turns, like, back-to-back, -back, right? Mm -hmm. You took the U-turn pretty heavily from Wellspring Ogre Pong. The next turn, you did a good play by bringing in the King Gambit, you know, not being affected by that Dire Claw, but still keeping it back in was really tough. You did have to sack one. Either way, that close combat was going to come through regardless on that side. Mm -hmm. And what were you going to swap in? Your Ogre Pong, who's on, like, no HP? Maybe. Are you going to swap in your Rillaboom, who's also weak to that... Oh, 
What else is your Ogapon really going to do, though? It is 40 HP. The whole point for your Ogapon is going to be tanky. If it's not tanky, then it's kind of useless, right? And then you bring it back in after your, your King. Yeah, but it's so fall. low that it's not going to be able to take that close combat, you know? Yeah, it would you, go down. Yeah. Yeah, but you're fine with that, I think. Um, in any case, we're going to be seeing the next move coming out here. Psychic onto the Gouging Fire. Woodhammer coming out and then Cinderor. Not going to do as much damage as we saw last time. Uh, Rillaboom going to be taking a nice immediate from it as a result too. Hal coming out once more just to try to get every drop of damage out from Olivia's side of the field. But as every turn goes more forward and every step gets taken, it feels more and more air excited if you ask me but it's still definitely possible to come back and try to steal this series away. Uh, Heat Crash is going to be going out to the Indeedee. If there's a swap in, it could be pretty bad if Urshifu comes out in place of Indeedee, which isn't unlikely because I feel like Indeedee's kind of done the job right now and you kind of want to have it in the back line to kind of break the grassy terrain. So a switch is very likely if you ask me, but with Urshifu coming out, being a water type, getting hit by... Uh, I forgot what move, a heat crash. I feel like it, it's not going to be a very scary play. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And Didi's going to go for that follow me. That U turn's going to come back onto the Rillaboom. That's a good Terra type right there. That's a good Terra Terrestrialization right there. Not going to take too much damage from that U turn, which, which has been, honestly, that U turn has been a lot more effective than we've seen other people use that parting shot, right? Mm -hmm. You've been getting a lot of damage on that U turn. Um, so, uh, like, good Terrestrialization from Olivia's apart right there. A lot of things not going Olivia's way in this game entirely. So, you know, having a good turn must feel good right there. Um, Urshifu's going to come back in, not have that defensive drop. The U-turn comes in on Ndidi, and now uh, Rillaboom is going to come back out in place for Ogre Bomb. Now we're going to be seeing the Ogre Pond coming back in. I feel like this is a pretty good situation to see the Ogre Pond coming out. It is low HP, like you said, so it is most likely going to go down, but it's taking a hit that you don't want any of your other Pokemon to be taking. Heat Crash is going to knock out the Ndidi. We're looking at a 3v3 now, but with that Ogre Pond so low, it's only a matter of time before it eventually goes down. It's not going to be able to fulfill a lot of its usages. However, uh, Eric bringing out the Urshifu, I think right now he wants to get rid of something and he has ample opportunity to. It always feels weird using something as potent as an Urshifu to take down Pokemon that's so low, but you're gonna have to commit on getting rid of one of these Pokemon. I feel like Gouging Fire represents the biggest threat to your team right now. The Sneasler is gonna be coming back, so very likely we could see two Pokemon coming down here. Burning Bulwark represents a bit of a threat to that kind of uh, strategy, but with the Heat Crash coming, maybe trying to read uh, the fact that you know, double KO is more likely. So maybe a switch play Eric might be going for and Olivia could be trying to read that. Mm. I'm not too sure though. I think the Dire Claw comes onto the Ogre Pong, which is pretty is pretty obvious, right? The follow me comes through for Olivia. Oli so the Dire Claw is just, I guess, gonna fall right on. Right there. Oh, never mind. Yeah, he but turn comes through and then just gets the Ogre Pong just right away. Sorry, yeah, what were you saying? I was gonna say like, you know, I, I didn't want the follow me play to come down because whether even if you follow me or not, if the Pokemon goes down, then the rest of the news are going to hit the other Pokemon, like yeah. we just saw, you know. Uh, but the Heat Crash, or I'm, oh no, it's a withdrawal. Yeah, withdrawal. I was like to say, there's no way Urshifu just went down, because uh, I, I, yeah, I'm looking back now. The uh, gouging fire in a really bad situation is actually still going to survive that. I wasn't expecting that, but the Heat Crash coming out onto the Caesar also surviving it. It's a 2v3 now with your Gouging Fire at 14 HP. Now we're going to heal up a little bit of that, but you have your Rillaboom who's at about half into an Incineroar and a Sneasler. Mm -hmm. This game's looking pretty pretty hard for the, Olivia. The Sneasler's low enough. I, it's not low enough where Fake Out will knock it out, but at least it will take it away from the turn just right there. Mm -hmm. Right? The Incineroar is not obviously able to do that. Um, it can go out, come back out for another attack drop, and then kind of secure the game that way. I do think as long as Eric doesn't make any blunders, Eric does have this in, in the back. I feel like maybe a play would be breaking swipe uh, and faking out the Incineroar. I feel like that kind of covers a lot of bases, except for maybe a, a clever switch out. U-turn, not going to allow you to switch out. I don't even know if you'd be allowed to use that move here, but the fake out going onto the Incineroar, but the burning bulwark is going to be used you have to really just hope that you know the the sneezler comes out and hits the gouging fire but if it doesn't 
then it does it, and you're in a bad situation regardless. So you're gonna be losing the Rillaboom. Um, breaking Swipe, I feel like might have KO'd the Sneasler. I think that Gouging Fire is still under the influence of a Howler or two. Um, and it, at the very least would have reduced the attack to right. maybe allow the Rillaboom to survive that. But not the play that Olivia is going to go for. And with facing down three yeah. Pokemon and at about like a quarter HP, it seems that this game is going to be going to Eric. This game is pretty much done for. Yeah, as Olivia is going to uh, cancel the battle, call the set, and Eric will take that set pretty handily, at least for the last game. Two very close games in the beginning. And then the last one pretty much handedly going Eric's way. That was a really good fight uh, from Olivia right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very solid. Always love to see those kinds of battles. Like I said, it, it felt like a master class. We really got to enjoy just watching the back and forth between the two of them. Uh, it felt like they were making a lot of very calculated plays mm -hmm. and trying to play around each other's advanced tactics and strategies. So it was a pleasure to enjoy that series. Like you said, first suit, very close. Last one, Eric kind of stole that away because there's a couple of moments there that kind of just completely stopped Olivia's momentum. The, the first two turns, I really feel like kind of spelled doom for the rest of the battle uh so that will be i think that was our fourth round of swiss yeah and it was a very enjoyable one overall. that was our fourth round and we're about to head into our last round the round five will be the next one for sure we'll probably watch another three and one game anyways because mm -hmm. whoever wins that will guaranteed to move on to top cut whoever loses might have a chance to get in we don't know necessarily um, but whoever will win our next game on stream will be guaranteed top cut. Eric, for sure, guaranteed top cut right mm -hmm. now. 4 um, Has the potential, is, is 4 0 currently, and has the potential to go 5 0. Um, so we'll kind of have to see what shakes up um, in the future. Mm -hmm. um, we talked previously, right? In previous rounds, we talked about what we wanted to see. Before, we had just purely balanced teams. And then before, after that, we got. Um, what, what, do we, what do we have last game? We had that. Well, I don't know about last. I'm not sure if it was last game, but we did have that Pelipper. We uh, had the Pelipper, Pelipper rain team. team. That wasn't really a rain team. It wasn't really a rain team. It was more like a terrain team with rain terrain. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm getting at? Rain like, terrain, baby. You don't really build um, a team around terrain, right. but you use it. I feel like yeah. that Urshifu was playing around a water terrain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you get what this, I'm saying. Yeah, but this was the first time that we've actually had... Oh, I forgot. We had a Trick Room team last last game. It was uh, the uh, the Registeel um, yeah. team. Uh, this is the first te like actual one that we had, like something so a team that leans very heavily into a sort of style, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it'll be very interesting to see what we have next. We haven't seen any su uh, Sun teams. We still haven't seen any hard-leaning rain teams. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens in the next couple of rounds, but I'm excited. I'm very excited too. As we head into the next round of Swiss, I believe it is our last one. I heard somewhere from maybe five or six yeah, rounds. I'm five. definitely going to double check. So <laughs> yeah. Next round will I'll be take the last one for sure. Next round of Swiss will be the last one. Top cut, top eight yes. uh, will be making it into the playoffs. And again, that's where all the points are on the line. So the players will be getting ready and be focusing up, observing, taking notes, preparing for potentially their last battles here. So don't go anywhere as the next battles will be the most exciting. We hope to see you very soon.